Good evening, family of God, and welcome to our midweek teaching here at the Embassy Church. We are so glad that you are able to join us this evening. And I'm so thankful to my pastors, Vernon and Nisha Jacob, for this opportunity to share God's word. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, I come to you in no other name but the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor to share your word. And as I speak, my God, I pray that I would decrease and you will increase. I pray, God, that as I speak, your people will be encouraged and impacted, Father, and you, O God, will be glorified. I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, family, I've got a question for you this evening. And the question is, what is it in life that you are pursuing? What is it that consumes you? What are you chasing after and hoping to acquire in this life? Whilst you ponder on that thought, let us hear what the Word of God says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 21. It says, the lovers of God who chase after righteousness will find all their dreams come true. An abundant life drenched with favor and a fountain that overflows with satisfaction. Another translation says it like this. He who earnestly seeks after and craves righteousness, mercy, and loving kindness will find life in addition to righteousness, which is uprightness and right standing with God and honor. Amen. God bless his word. After reading this, it becomes much clearer as to what, or more specifically, who it is that we are who are called believers, should be pursuing, which led me to the title, The Great Pursuit. The scripture speaks about one who chases after righteousness, one who earnestly seeks after and craves God, earnestly pursuing after our Father in heaven, and in so doing, reaping the benefits and the rewards that God promises to those who seek Him. When exactly should you pursue God is a question that one might ask. You should do so when you feel fearful or anxious or when you find yourself in any kind of trouble. We are encouraged many times through scripture to not fear, 365 times as a matter of fact. But when you do find yourself in trouble, seek God. Although I might add, we may not need much convincing of that Because trouble has a way of causing you, even forcing you, to seek God anyway. Fear and trouble have a way of bringing you to your knees and crying out to the Lord. The fact is, in life you will have trouble. In life you will face fear. But the truth is, God is your refuge and your strength. A very present help in trouble, according to Psalms 46 and verse 1. Amen. You are to seek God and pursue God in times of adversity or calamity. There may be times in life when everything that can go wrong seems to be going wrong. Life as we know it is unpredictable and full of many challenges. Your marriage could be falling apart. Your child could be going astray. You may be dealing with an overwhelming illness Your business may not be doing well. You're a breadwinner and you've lost your job. I'm sure you know by now that life happens to us all. How then do you pursue God in such circumstances? You feel like you just cannot do it. I tell you what, in your own strength, you cannot. But Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says this, Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, 
energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. We serve such an awesome God. He wants you to pursue him and he knows that on your own you would not be able to do so. So as his word tells us, God is all the while at work in you. He's energizing you. He's creating in you power and desire to seek him and to please him. Pursuing God displays trust in his ability and his reliability, especially in times of uncertainty. Amen. Someone out there that might be listening to this will be saying, I'm a believer, yes, but I have sinned. How then do I pursue God? I feel so unworthy. I feel like I don't have a right to pursue God. 1 John 1 9 reads, if we freely admit we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and he will forgive our sins. He will dismiss our lawlessness and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. So there, if you've sinned, when you sin, because you will, you can pursue God. As a matter of fact, you should pursue God. You must pursue God. Don't allow sin to cause you to run away from God. Instead, run to God. If you come before the Father with a heart of repentance, you can be sure that God who is faithful, full of love and full of compassion will extend his mercy and his grace to you. Amen. There may be times in life when you feel spiritually barren, you feel dry, you feel drained. When you feel distant from God, you feel as if God is not hearing you. Not that God is deaf, but that God is not hearing you. Could it be that you are allowing the demands of life to dominate your life? Could it be perhaps that you are committing some kind of spiritual adultery where your attention and your affection is going in the wrong direction, where your focus and your attention and your affection should be towards God? It's going on other things. It's towards other things. You see, there may never be a perfect time to spend with God. There may never be what you will call the right time, but it is up to you and I to make the time to spend with God. Are you so busy then, trying so hard to please God by your actions, yet at the same time you fail to please God with your actions? I believe that many of us need to earnestly seek God and chase after him for his righteousness. And this, as I said, applies to each and every one of us. We need to stop being so busy and take time to become a Mary in a Martha world. Hallelujah. There's times when you feel forgotten. I'm speaking to you, mom. I'm speaking to you, dad, to you, young man, young lady. You may feel forgotten, forsaken. You feel abandoned, overlooked, disappointed, discouraged. Sometimes you feel unloved, unappreciated, and unvalued. It's not okay, but it's okay because God sees you. And when you feel all of these feelings, it's, it, it kind of results in you drifting away, pulling away from God. And that is when you start to feel a spiritual barrenness and a spiritual dryness. But I tell you what, in moments like these, when you're feeling dry and barren, when you feel that you are at your weakest, when you feel you're at your lowest, you ought to develop a hunger and a thirst for the righteousness of God and allow him to refill you, to refuel you and to refresh you. Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Having said all that, family, I'd like to remind you, though, that life in itself is not all doom and gloom. There are days when the sun will shine. Of that, you can be sure. There are days when things go well. There comes a time in each one's life where there is a turning point. 
a time for celebration, and celebrate you must. In the book of Deuteronomy and chapter 8, the Israelites were reminded not to forget all that God had done for them. In verse 10 it says, When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God. Verse 11 says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his precepts, and his statutes. This leads me then to say, Pursue God, give thanks to God, even when all is going well. Do not forget God in the times that you are feeling like you're on a mountaintop. Do not forget God because we know that it is God who ultimately gives us the ability to obtain wealth. It is He who heals, who saves, who delivers, who sets free. It is God who causes us to achieve things in life. The obstacles that we overcome, the battles that we win are not by might. That, that is not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. I'm tempted to say right now, I rise to tell you this evening, the great pursuit of God should happen in times of trouble, in times of fear. The Bible says, do not be anxious for anything, but seek God in everything. Hallelujah. We ought to pursue God in times of adversity and calamity. No matter what you may facing, run to God. In times of sin and shame, as I said, don't allow shame to take you away, but instead to cause you to run to God who will forgive you. At times when you are spiritually dry or drained, and even when all is going well, I'm saying to you, family, pursue God at all times. Yes, pursue God always. Pursuing God is not just knowing about him, it's knowing him and who he is. It causes you to soak up in his presence, being full to the brim, being full to overflowing, yet not being satisfied, still wanting more and more of him. And as much as you seek him, as much as you want more of him, God is willing and able to pour out more of himself into you. Some of the things that we pursue in life are like a chasing after the wind. It is definitely not the case when we pursue God. Your pursuit of God is bound to produce fruit in your life. There are benefits to earnestly, wholeheartedly chasing after God, which are far more than you can ever imagine. When you pursue him, you surrender your life to him. You entrust him with all of your possessions. You entrust him with your marriage, your family, your health, your wealth. You entrust him with everything that concerns you. You start to delight yourself in the Lord, which pleases him. He grants you the desires of your heart. Amen. What are those desires? He will grant you the desires that he has placed on the inside of you. And I'm not just speaking about the desires of the physical or the natural kind, but supernatural desires too. Like I said, desires and passions and promises that your mind cannot even comprehend. You will soon realize that God who created you, created you on purpose. You are not a mistake. Even though somebody out there may have told you so, God created you on purpose, for a purpose, and with purpose. And when you seek God, you will begin to find that purpose. Your, the, your purpose for living, for being on this earth, will begin to be revealed to you. When you pursue God, God will give you rest for your weary soul. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will have joy on the inside of you. Joy that is full, that is complete, that is overwhelming. Not the joy that the world gives, because if the world gives it to you, the world can take it away. But this is an unending joy that comes from seeking God. You will begin to have a confidence on the inside of you that will cause you to declare the word of God over every situation that you find yourself in. You will boldly declare that I am the head and not the tail. You will boldly declare that I am above and not beneath. All because you pursue God and he puts on the inside of you a holy kind of boldness that causes you to go from complaining about a thing to praying about it instead. 
When you find yourself worrying, you will stop worrying. Instead of worrying, you'll begin to worship this awesome God. In your place of pain, you will start to praise this awesome God. You will have perfect peace in the midst of any storm that life throws at you. You will have such peace that the human mind cannot even comprehend. Jesus said, that we will have trouble in this world, but he also promised us his peace. And of that, we can be sure. Healing and wholeness of your body, your mind, and your soul will be yours in Jesus' name. And when this life is over, when all is said and done, when you leave this earth, you will receive eternal life through Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. What an awesome, mighty God we serve. Pursue God, I tell you. Pursue him. Seek his face. Crave his righteousness. Long to be in his presence. And some of the ways in which you can do this is through studying. Find God in his word. I guarantee you there's a promise for every problem that you face. Seek God in praise and in worship. There may be times that you cannot even utter a word to God. Praise him. Put in some music. Worship God. Just drench yourself in his presence and watch what God will do in you, through you, and for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, eternal and most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, my God, for such an awesome time as this. I thank you, God, that you loved us so much. We love you, O Father, only because you loved us so much. Help us, Lord, to seek you, to serve you, to crave your righteousness, to pursue you with everything that is on the inside of us, my God. Help us to never stray, to never turn away, no matter what the situation we may face. Help us, God, to come with the heart of repentance repentance and thanksgiving before you for all that you have done in our lives my God for where you have brought us from we thank you and for where you are taking us to and for what you are going to do in our lives we give you thanks we give you praise in Jesus mighty name I pray God that you would bless all of your people father bless them and keep them Cause your face, O oh God, to shine upon them and give them perfect peace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.